Hey, it's Software Engineering Student here, and today we're going to be talking about the object oriented programming paradigm, which is the basic paradigm we're going to be using, or I'll be using in Java, and we mostly use in Java. So, the paradigm consists of four basic pillars we've got the abstraction, encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. First, I'm going to just discuss these uh, basic principles, and we're going to go into some code and actually get some examples of how we use it or what it's used for. So, First, abstraction. Abstraction, as its name, is simply the ability to abstract from like everything and being able to focus on what's important. And the best example is a car. You just need to know how to drive a car. To drive it, you actually don't need the knowledge of how exactly the engine works or how the wheel turns and so on. So you're able to abstract from like all these unnecessary things as long as you know the basics of how to drive. Then we got uh, encapsulation. And encapsulation is simply the ability to encapsulate stuff and therefore hide it and then create and um, get rid of a lot of complexity by actually having stuff hidden if you don't need it to be seen or also also because of security reasons you're able to like hide stuff so it can't be accessed if you don't want people to access it. So it, it's, it's a pretty good um, security feature. Then we have polymorphism which is the ability to change the type of objects. So in Java we use, use Together with the extra abstraction and inheritance the next pillar in polymorphism we create a lot of these um, classes and subclasses that have some kind of uh, higher um, relationship and therefore we're able to change the form polymorphism soft having multiple forms to change the forms between these uh, different objects then we've got uh, inheritance which is the ability for one class to inherit another class and therefore we get rid of a lot of duplicate code because you can take one class inherit it and then have this other class reuse the code and the features for the first class. So it's the four basic pillars of um, the OOP paradigm. Let's get into some code and see how it works. Now we're inside IntelliJ where we're going to be demonstrating the four pillars of OOP. So we got abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. So first of all let's create a new abstract class to create some abstraction. So we will create an animal, animal class, and we will make it abstract, which means it can't be initiated, but it can be extended, which means inheritance. So we could just create some basic stuff, string, name, oopsie doopsie, and we would do private, private string name, to use encapsulation because that's the basic of encapsulation is creating some private attributes to like encapsulate them so you can't access them and private a int h let's keep that for now so a basic animal got a name and an h and we're going to create a constructor and we're going to create an abstract method. Abstract void eat, which means all animals should be able to eat. Abstract method is a part of the abstraction. We're able to create a method that uh, defines that we need to create an eat method in the classes that extends animal. So now let's create a specific animal. We're going to create a bear. So, by now we used abstraction to hide all the basic features of an animal. We're going to we use encapsulation to create some private variables, attributes. And we're going to use inheritance for the bear to be able to inherit the basic features of an animal. So, we're going to extend animal. And now we get an error because we need to implement our eat method. We need to override it. It's mentioned because it's an abstract method. And we need to create a constructor matching the super class. So we need public bear string name int h just like the animal. And then we pass the name and h variables to our constructor from a super class through the super keyword. And therefore get rid of a lot of duplicate code because we don't need to create this again. All this 
So now, if we had another animal, for example, if we wanted another animal called a dog, for example, we could very easily create the same feature as well, just going extends animal, oops, implement method, and implement the constructor. So very fast, we can create a lot of animals with all these, uh, these basic features. And for the bear, we'll just do right to the console, bearer, eating, and similarly we would do for the dog, dog eating, and that's the basics of it. So, let's talk about polymorphism last. So now we have abstraction, we're able to create like a superclass, an abstract class that contains the stuff we need, we can inherit it inside uh, the classes to get rid of duplicate code and create less complexity. We use encapsulation to create some private attributes we can't access. Can't access them at all by now, but let's actually show how we would be able to access. We can access them through methods. We'd create a getter method, so like get the name. So we would be able to create a, let's create another abstract class. Abstract void, that's like a get name. Oh, we can't, we should do print name. Because methods, of course, can't have the same name that then it just confused the program. So, right now, create another abstract method. We get another error, we need to implement the method. And in this one, we would just print. And then we use the get name method because we can't access the name because it is private. But we can access it access it through our get name method. So let's create some animals. So polymorphism stuff having more than one form. So we would create an animal type object, but we can create animal objects because it's abstract so we create animal time type object called bear which is a new not animal but a new bear and we will give it, give it a name gym and an age of two and this is a basic send an animal object that contains a bear object so it got multiple forms polymorphism it's both an animal and a bear object at the same time which can seem a bit confusing, but shortly I'll show what's actually the use of this. And let's create an animal dog, which is a new dog, and we'll call him uh, Fit. And he's the name of three. So now, the main purpose of what this actually did, what does it actually mean that we create an animal type new bear instead of creating a bear type new bear is that the first type of an object defines which methods we can use. And the second type defines what type of method, or like on which level we would use the method. So the animal methods is eat and print name. So we are only able to use eat and print name methods on our bear object. But because we created it as a new bear, we would use the eat and print name versions created inside the bear, the overwritten versions inside the bear class, and similarly with the with the dog class. So we can use bear dot eat dog dot eat, and what it would do, it would at first check does animal contain the eat method, and there we go, it does. Then it will go into dog or bear and check this version of eat does what? Does this, execute, execute. So we get bear is eating and dog is eating. And one of the, like, the beauties of this, we would be able to create an, uh, an array list containing an animal type. We we'll call it animals equals new array list. And we would add animals dot add bear and animals dot 
add the dog. And because the eat method is actually the same method from the animal abstract class, we are able to just on this array list create f4 for each loop and take type animal, animal variable name through the animals array, and then on each animal call eat. So we're able to simply go through our array which contains animal types, but because of polymorphism, they actually got different specific types. And then when we call eat from the animal uh, abstract class on each animal, they will actually have different outcomes because we have the different different uh, different secondary types, the basis of polymorphism. And there we go. Like before, we get bear is eating and dog is eating. So. This is the basics of the OOP paradigm. We had abstraction, creating abstract classes, or interfaces for that matter, and therefore reusing code, creating encapsulation, only being able to access our private attributes through get methods. We got inheritance, creating subclasses that extends our superclass, abstract animal class in this instance. And then we had the polymorphism being able to create multiple forms for objects. So this is the basics of the OOP paradigm. Thank you very much for listening and hope to see you soon.